hi everyone. Today's Wednesday. We call it hump day. It's the middle of the week. And uh, maybe you're, you're already looking forward to the weekend. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, if, if you're one of those that's uh, not finding joy during the week, I would encourage you to just take that to the Lord. We don't need a hump day. Every day. Even Wednesday, Mondays, Thursdays, the weekends, every day is a day unto the Lord. And so find joy and pleasure in this day and purpose. Maybe that's in your work. Maybe that's in your work at home. Maybe that's in your care of kids or grandkids. Maybe you're volunteering someplace this week. Or maybe you're just finding silence and solitude with the Lord. But whatever it is you, you do, find pleasure today uh, for we're not even guaranteed tomorrow are we but that that's a whole different devotional I digress we're back in the gospel of Matthew the 13th chapter uh, these are parables of the kingdom of God and we're gonna spend a couple of days here at least today we're gonna read uh, from that gospel of Matthew the 13th chapter verses 47 through 50 and so I would uh, encourage you to grab your Bible and join me as uh, I read this for us. This is called the, the known as, at least, the parable of the net. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. They sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Another kingdom parable of Jesus. This is like the parable of the wheat and the weeds. Uh, you remember that, that was uh, another parable about the great separation, but that the wheat and the weeds would grow together and the, the great sorting or separation would come at the end of the age. Well, here too, the separation will come at the end of the age, and Jesus says it will, it will come with the angels. This is at the second coming of the Messiah, the, um, Jesus the Christ. By the way, Christ is really just the Greek word for Messiah. So um, Christ isn't Jesus' last name, <laughs> although we think it is, but it's really Jesus the Messiah in Greek, uh, uh, Jesus Christo, uh, Jesus the Christ. Anyway, uh, Jesus says, uh, uses this parable that's very, would be very common to the disciples in particular. Remember, a good half of them are fishermen. They come from great fishing families, pretty prominent fishing families up on the Sea of Galilee, uh, Lake Gennesaret as it is also known. And so Peter and Andrew and Simon, or uh, <laughs> Simon is Andrew, and uh, James and John come from uh, fishing families. And so uh, they would get this parable right away. And in fact, most uh, of the people uh, to whom Jesus speaks would understand this parable as well. I love to fish and that's pretty much what I do uh, in between hunting seasons <laughs> is fish. And uh, I've really, this year in particular, uh, enjoyed walleye fishing. Now, walleye are, are uh, a fickle fish. They school and they're predators, and so they're moving all the time. Wherever the bait fish go, the walleye go. So it's really difficult to find them. Uh, from day to day, they move around. One day I'll have a glorious day of fishing and the next day I'll do the exact same thing in the exact same spot and I'll catch nothing. But while fishing for walleye, I found this year, uh, it's highly likely that you'll catch other fish as well. Uh, for instance, a smallmouth bass. Our walleye rig that I use uh, is basically a, a worm harness. You just stick a worm on a couple of hooks and drop it in. Well, it turns out that uh, smallmouth bass also 
like worms. And so I'll be fooled sometimes as I bring a fish in and I think, all right, a walleye. By the way, one of the best tasting fish out there. But then I'll get it to the boat and I'll think, oh, just a bass. And I'll throw it back. This year, in fact, though, I was fishing with my nephew who came up from uh, Reno, California. Uh, he, he and my niece, uh, Lauren and Kyle, my brother Mike's uh, daughter and her husband came up and we fished by McNary Dam. And uh, we were right at the bridge where the 82 crosses over into Oregon. And he thought that he hooked into a snag, that he was stuck on the bottom. Well, we tried to get it loose and tried to get it loose, but as I moved the boat closer to where he thought the snag was, the snag kept moving. <laughs> well, it quickly became apparent that he wasn't snagged, but that he had hooked into a large fish. It took about an hour for him to land that fish. And I know many of you are well ahead of me. Um, my fishing buddies are well ahead of me. Uh, Bill Peterson, you know what I'm talking about. Jeff Pilger and the rest, you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, he had hooked into a very large sturgeon, in fact. So we landed the sturgeon. I uh, didn't have a scale that was big enough to weigh it, but my guess it was uh, easily 50 pounds. That's a big fish. It was like four feet long. It was a monster. That was really exciting. And of course it wasn't sturgeon season, so we threw it back and set it on its way. But this is what Jesus is talking about. There's gonna be a great separation between walleye and sturgeon and bass. And it is in this parable that I've just given you, like Jesus, it's gonna be the walleye that are separated for salvation in the kingdom. The fish of value, value to the Lord. Friends, uh, just like the wheat and the, the weeds, we too must be mindful of this great separation at the second coming of Christ. No, not in a way that gives us fear. We know that we have value because of Christ Jesus, but in a way that might lead us to speaking more boldly of our faith. I have a, an older brother and his uh, wife and family. I'm not sure about their relationship with our Lord. They've been away from the church for many, 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 many years. And when I think of uh, this great separation, either the wheat and the weeds or the separation of the, the fish, I think of my older brother and his family. And the the reality perhaps that they're not in the kingdom. Now I'm not making a judgment, not at all. But it would break my heart. It's my deepest desire that uh, he would know the Lord. And maybe he does. So that when the separation comes, that God looks at him through the, the lens of Christ and dispenses grace. Who in your life are you concerned about? Do you lift him up in prayer? Has God given you the boldness to speak the truth? Every Sunday when we pray for those who are um, 
lost or who, who have grown um, cold in faith. My brother is uh, the one for whom I pray. So friends, who do you pray for in this space? Prayer is going to get the job done. I believe that God will do this. That God's love abounds in grace and, and uh, though I'm not confident of my brother's salvation, I know that's the greatest desire that, that God wants for him and his family. And so I keep praying and I trust in God's grace. And I'm bold in my proclamation when I can be. These parables about this separation don't give us fear, but they do turn us to a Lord and to others uh, who may be uh, far from him. And the best thing we can do is continue to pray and, and pray and pray and trust. Because in the end, the reality is, is that there will be those who don't choose Christ, who, who will live with that choice for eternity. And so the seriousness of the parable here of the net is one that we can't take lightly, but we can use it to turn to the Lord in prayer and trust. That's what I'm going to do and will continue to do. I hope you will do as well. Let's pray. Let's, let's in particular pray for those uh, who may not yet know Christ. Lord, we pray that, and we say not yet, we pray that those who don't yet know you would come to know you. We pray for those who are not yet in Christ Jesus or who may have grown cold in faith. Speak to them, Holy Spirit. Provide someone, and maybe it's us and maybe it's not, to be bold in speaking the truth. And God, help us in the end to trust you. That at the great sorting, your grace and love will prevail. And that those uh, whom we love and care about deeply uh, would know you, would claim you as their own, would return to you, O Lord, our God. In your name we pray. Amen. It's been great to be with you. I love you. I, I care about you deeply. I miss you. And I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.